I've been paying the police for 10 years. What? As a prostitute? As a prostitute. My ex-husband was a criminal. I paid the police many times for him. And I would have been very happy to continue paying the police because it's a way of life. It's how you survive. But when the police become judge, jury and executioner, then someone has to speak up. Someone has to come forward. Someone has to start somewhere and say something. Everybody, no matter who they are. Heroin dealers, murderers, thieves, everyone's entitled to justice, to a trial, to, to some form of being able to stand up and defend themselves. It's a fine declaration, but someone could still say, here's a lady who's pregnant, here's a lady who's a drug addict, here's a lady who has been or is a prostitute. She's just had her man shot, she's very bitter, and she's about to tip a bucket on everyone. Truth or non-truth? People can say that. <laughs> and I'd understand why. But uh, this this isn't just for me. This this it has to be f for someone besides me, besides Warren. This isn't only for me. This is this is for all the people who've who've suffered and who could possibly suffer or be killed in the future. This is real. This isn't something I've made up in revenge or in anger. This is cold, bare fact. What sort of man is Warren? Tell us what, um, clearly physical, if, yeah, physically, Warren was a very strong man. Was he a thug? Oh, well, yeah, he was, he was a criminal. Uh, I, I don't know whether I'd, I'd, I'd call him a thug or not, but you got to face facts. Warren was a criminal. He certainly wasn't the clean-cut boy next door. <laughs> he certainly wasn't that. He was dealing in heroin. That's right. How much heroin? How much are uh, talking about? As in, how much was it worth? Uh, well, the heroin that Warren actually took was extremely high grade. Cut down, it was worth thirty-seven thousand dollars. Thirty-seven thousand. So he scoots off with thirty-seven thousand dollars worth of heroin. Just let me get. A meeting arranged in North Sydney. Warren goes with a mate to meet two other men. Warren knocks one man out, puts the other guy in a boot, puts the guy he's knocked out in the boot as well, a different car, and then discovers that the guy's just ripped off for... Uh... Oh, working for the police. Did he come home and tell you that? Oh, of course, he was terrified and, um, and shocked. I mean, um, it, it, it wasn't expected. You know, he came home and... And, well, he was just really a bit startled. Was that a regular night for Warren? I mean, not to run into police or two men working for the police, but to go out and make a deal of that sort of heroin that much and knock someone out? Uh, well, rip-offs are extremely common in, in the heroin business because, you know, you can't... A heroin dealer can't ring up the police and say, you know, this this guy's just ripped me off. Unless, of course, he's working for the police. The two men he ripped off, did Warren know who they worked for? N not at that stage. No. At, at what stage? Well, when did he find out? Uh, he didn't find out until a couple of weeks later. Uh, Warren came home at... 12 o'clock and said he was going to get picked up just before 2 o'clock that afternoon. They, they wanted 
Warren to take off his his coat. He was he was wearing this large sheepskin coat, this sheepskin lined coat. What? Uh, how could he dress so he couldn't hide a gun? Presumably. That's right. Warren. In fact, he he didn't want Warren to wear a jumper, just a just a shirt and then a pair of pants, which which Warren was very happy to comply with. Uh, in fact, I even ironed a, a, a warm shirt for him to wear, but it was really cold, so so he ended up wearing a, a jumper, a, a, a close-fitting jumper. Did Warren try and take his gun that Saturday morning or Saturday lunchtime? Oh, God, no. Sally, they're extraordinary charges. It's the sort of thing you expect to hear from Hollywood, not in suburban Australia. I never know that, but it's happening here. I know it sounds unbelievable, but it's real and it's happening. Do you think the police had had no idea you would take this wife? Did they expect you to lie low, keep quiet? Uh, yeah, I, I think the police thought that. I, I'd keep my mouth shut. As, as I've been quiet all these years. You surely can't stay here. You surely can't stay in Australia if what you say is correct. No, I have to leave the country. Not only because of the police, but <laughs> a lot of criminals are going to be very upset with me. Uh, I've upset the balance. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of detectives are, I suppose, going to be very scared. It's going to be a lot harder for criminals to get away with a lot of things. But it had to be done.